Well, welcome everybody. This is V Numa and you. A little bit of disclaimer here. Good old legalese that VMware wants us to put in there. There we go. So my name is David Klee. Uh, as you can tell, I'm kind of a certified geek. <laughs> Uh, I'm the founder of Heraflux Technologies. We've been in business for about four years, and we really focus on how data technologies and infrastructure technologies really come together. Contact info is up here. If you have any questions on this stuff, feel free to contact me. You know, we don't bite. We have fun with this stuff. This is your worst nightmare. And no, this was not Frogger. <laughs> this was actually a very, very large database server running on a brand new HP Superdome X. This was real. This was not me running synthetic benchmarks. That's 144 cores running full bore. And I tried. I really tried. There was two NUMA nodes in there that were running just a little bit lower. It's a real workload. How are you going to virtualize this stuff? How are you going to make sure that this lines up with the physical machine topology properly? Because if you don't, we objectively measured a 55% performance hit on this machine when we got rid of VNUMA and just let it run them up. It's awful. Okay, first of all, let's go through a little bit of CPU architecture here. Modern CPUs are built in a, a pretty interesting way. Every CPU package, or really what fits in a socket, has got multiple processing cores. Each processing core has got level 1 and level 2 memory caches in there. They've got what's also called last level cache, or some people call it L3 cache. This is a shared cache between these machines. And then you've got all the other stuff that doesn't really fit into the cores, like memory controllers, things like that. They call this the uncore. We have to make sure that our workload lines up with how this stuff is architected. But we also have to figure out how this lines up with the physical machine topology. Now, if you haven't ever seen this before, and I'm sure most of you have, this is what's called a main board or a motherboard. This is where everything comes together. <laughs> that is a CPU socket. This is your worst nightmare when it comes to very large applications that just struggle to consume NUMA acti actively. Now, interesting thing here. Back in the day, they decided that they wanted to improve CPU and memory performance by instead of letting everything connect to everything, they actively go and created this thing called NUMA nodes, or non-uniform memory access. That's a NUMA node. And what that is, is that's memory and CPU that are very, very close to each other on the motherboard. This particular motherboard's a motherboard. It's got four. That means we have four distinct sets of CPU and RAM that we have to go accommodate and make sure we balance. Because in terms of locality, this stuff really matters. Now, if my workload is such where it's all kept in this one nice and neat NUMA node, guess what? The memory lookup is very, very low. It's all right there. Everything is good. But if the application is bigger than what's in that NUMA node, both from CPU core count or memory assignment, that can now span NUMA nodes. The cost to look up memory in a remote NUMA node, even on the most modern CPUs you've got, it's over three times slower than what's local. That's a challenge because most of these applications that we work with, these really big applications, are extremely sensitive to NUMA variability. So much so that Windows even looks at the cost for memory access at the time it turns on. You can see this if you fire up CPU core info right now. It's actually got a little matrix at the bottom. It's really cool. So the very first thing that we need to do, whatever workload you're on, I deal specifically with SQL Server, a little bit of Oracle, uh, but any big NUMA-sensitive mission-critical application, first thing we have to do, determine how many CPUs you actually need. Now, this is a little bit extreme, but what do you actually need? <clears throat> And what we have to do, we have to go through a right-sizing analysis. You all know that I know, or you, you all know what I know, that you, if you add too many resources to a VM, it's going to slow it down. I'm going to show you why in just a second. But go through Perfmon, other, other you know, third-party utilities. There's a lot of great ones out there. Take a really good look. What CPU are you consuming? How much memory are you actually thrashing? Come to, come to find what you actually need. My goal is 40 to 60% CPU busy during normal activities, day-to-day -day stuff, and that's at peak. Now, we go a little bit deeper, like to look at percentiles, things like that. Sense is actually doing. Take that. Make sure you've got headroom in there. Test, test, test. Yeah, that's working now. We'll just do this. Yeah. 
Can we turn this off? Cool. Okay. So, once again, yeah, I can build you a billion dollar data center. Telecom and stuff like this? Uh-uh. <laughs> okay, so take a really good look. Figure out what your average CPU consumption is during mission critical processes, and then do a little bit of math. Try to figure out how to get that business critical area within 40 to 60% of CPU. What you're going to find is that most of the time, you're going to be able to cut cores significantly. Okay. Take that, and then turn around and do this to your entire environment. Figure this stuff out. We just did this for an airline. 2,700 production SQL servers. We found 2,400 of them would fit within four CPUs. Do this. Do database licensing by core. They were happy. <laughs> now take that. Resize the VMs as necessary. And what you're going to find is that on average, you're going to see a performance improvement with these things because it's less to juggle, it's less to manage. Now, let's talk about NUMA. Let's say we need to balance this thing in the physical environment. Take what you've got, the number of CPUs that you know you need, and then take the physical CPU infrastructure that you have available to you. So in this case, motherboard, it's got two sockets in there. We've got 12 core CPUs. We have 120 gigs of RAM per socket, 256 total. Okay, well, VM number one, 10 core VM, 64 gigs of RAM. That fits very comfortably inside that 12 core chip. And by assigning the 10 cores, one virtual socket, 64 gig of RAM, we know that that's going to fit comfortably inside the one. VMware is going to do a really good job to essentially group it and pin it on one of those nodes. And now we have no cross NUMA node lookups. It's going to be quick. It's going to be fast. But what if it spans it, be it memory, be it CPU? Well, take it, cut it in half. Try to keep this as small of a footprint as you can get. In this case, 16 doesn't fit inside 12 well. Cut it in half, assign it and do your testing. I cannot tell you objectively that this is guaranteed to be the best possible performance for every application that you've got because some of these things work differently. In some cases, a 4x4 outperforms a 2x8, even on a two-socket machine. But work with your application folks, work with your database folks. They can objectively do the math. They can show you which con uh, configuration is better for you. Now, once we do this, let's zoom out just a little bit. Take a really good look at your CPU overcommit ratio. Yes, I suck at PowerPoint. <laughs> what this does right here, this is just a two to one overcommit. This is a normal environment. There's not just one database that's going berserk or two in your environment. These things are really busy all the time. That's just two to one. I can get away with three to one most of the time. But now you have to figure out how do we determine how much load this physical machine can actually accommodate. So turn it around. Let's take a look at the CPU scheduling. Every single virtual machine and every single CPU in that VM has its own CPU scheduler. Every single one of these gets scheduled onto the physical compute resources through the hypervisor scheduling queues. VMware is good enough to actually expose those numbers so we can see it. And if you can see it, you can measure it, you can baseline it, and you can figure out where you stand. First thing, how many of you have heard of CPU ready time? Very cool. If you have not, this is the measurement per virtual CPU per VM every 20 seconds for exactly how long that virtual machine CPU has spent stuck in the CPU schedulers before it actually gets executed. And it's a sum milliseconds every 20 seconds. It's awesome. This gives you an objective value. What is my objective performance hit per vCPU? The values are up here. VMware's polling interval is 20 seconds. So now I can say, give me the sum of all of these, which they present. And they do it right there. That's the top entry up there. And they divide that by the number of CPUs, divide it by 20,000 milliseconds, or 20 seconds in that polling interval, and then multiply it by 100 to get 100%. And what you're going to find, most of the time, you may think that things are just flat out crazy in your environment. You're at less than 1% of a performance hit. Take that number, go to your application folks, share this with them, show them how to get in and see all of this, and I promise you, the next time there's a performance hiccup, they're not coming to you because they can get in and they can prove it to themselves that the virtualization layer is not a problem. Isn't that cool? But now, there's a link down at the bottom there that'll give you a lot more details. It's a dull, dry read. It'll put you to sleep, but it's got a lot of good info in there. Now, here's another one. We got a big, wide VM. These CPU schedulers are not necessarily linear. 
what we've got now is because of VMware, way back in the day, version 3.5, they started relaxing the SMP scheduling requirements where everything would happen together. So now they don't have to be scheduled identically at the same time. But now you can get a use case where some of these schedulers can actually cut in front of the others. And now you may have things where stuff is just running way too fast on some and a lot slower on the others, and you could get problems. Exactly right here. One of these is way out in the other. VMware actually detects this, and they say, hey, hang on a second. You're way out ahead. We're just going to stop you. We're going to let the others catch up, and then we'll let life go on as normal. This is something not many people have heard of. This is called VMware Co-Stop, or SMP Co-Scheduling Stop. It's pretty cool. There's not much out there on this. It's also measured in milliseconds, just like ready time. But whereas in ready time, I generally get concerned when I see things over about two and a half, three and a half percent. With ready time, if I see anything sustained for more than one polling interval, I start to get concerned. This, what you see on the screen here, this is perfectly normal on a big VM. Perfectly normal. Little ripples every once in a while, no big deal. Everything's perfectly fine. If I see a huge spike in one little blip, that means everything has just been rebalanced. It may have actually moved a NUMA home node on the physical machine. It could have been stopped because of other things going on in the background. At that point in time, that application is probably experiencing a pretty significant pause, and it may be long enough that applications can di uh, disconnect from databases. It could be that you know, the, the end user starts seeing errors on the screen. And if it's sustained, that outage could last for 20, 30 seconds, if not longer. This is a big deal. And nobody's talking about this. And the default statistics level inside vCenter, they don't even retain this. This is per host in RAM, not in vCenter. So go check this out. This is why I advocate for people. Change the vCenter collection interval. Go beyond the defaults, even just for one day, because then you can start to collect this stuff. And then you can start to trend it and see if you really have a problem. Another link right here to another blog post with more detail on that one. Now, I'm going to pick on SQL Server here for just a minute. This is just one application. There are a lot more out there that are very NUMA sensitive, but this is the one I know best. This is one where the database administrators out there are actually tailoring the database access to parallelism values based on the NUMA information that your VM is being signaled because of the configuration and the host machine topology. There are two settings, these two right here. Cost threshold for parallelism. There's this value of complexity that's calculated every single time a query goes through. And if that value is high enough, then the database engine will actually determine, it'll just say, I want to pick more than one CPU and run with it. Otherwise, it just grabs the least busy and go. This value right here of 25, the default is 5. I usually start at 25. But again, your mileage may vary. They can actually go tune this. But this is how wide you need the workload to run. And the next setting, max degree of parallelism. If the database engine decides to parallelize something, that's how many CPUs they're going to use. Guess what? If they can tune that to the number of CPUs inside one NUMA node, they have just pinned the workload to one NUMA node. And if you balance this thing properly, you get a performance gain. And sometimes we're talking 25%, sometimes we're talking 50%. And if you could do this in five clicks and have them change one setting right here and get a 25, 35% performance gain just by doing that, you look like a hero. The business owners are going to love you. And hey, you may be able to ask for a raise. Because if you do this right, you just potentially save them on database server licensing because now you can get more VMs on the same physical footprint. And if they apply the license to the physical CPU cores, you just got greater VM consolidation without a performance hit. Everybody wins. Any questions? Awesome. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for listening. If you have any questions, let me know.